We were at the fish store earlier today and saw some really cool invertebrates that you would just love to have in your aquarium, but you weren't sure whether they were gonna be a good fit or not. This video is all about which invertebrates to avoid as a beginner. Hi, I'm Richard from the Beginner's Reef and I'm here to help you succeed with your saltwater aquarium by providing you with great information, tips and resources. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and any links we mention in this video, you can find in the description below. Make sure you stick around to the end. I've got a bonus beginner tip that I think you're gonna really find helpful. Hopefully you're not at that point in your aquarium journey yet where you've been to the fish store and you've bought an invertebrate that maybe you shouldn't have and it's gone and just decimated some of your zoa population or it's gone and killed all your snail population. Well, this video is all about some of the invertebrates that you need to avoid as a beginner aquarist. You may be able to have them later on in your aquarium journey, but they may just need a bigger aquarium or to be housed with different fish and other invertebrates. Here's the list. Number one on the list are starfish or sometimes known as sea stars. These are really, really popular in the aquarium but they have a very, very, very high mortality rate, especially in new aquariums. They are so beautiful and so colorful that they're really, really tempting to buy, especially for beginners, especially if you go to the fish store and you see one that's only an inch across, but you've got to be really, really careful. I would just stay away from these as a beginner just because they need that mature aquarium. They spend all day just scavenging around the surface looking for food. Uh, sponges, sea anemones, algae, they really need a good diverse food source and most of them end up actually dying of starvation because you buy them as a beginner and there just isn't enough food in there so over time they just die. Some of them bury in the sand which is good for keeping your sand aerated but the problem is is they starve and you don't know that they're dead because you don't see them. And before you know it, your nitrates have gone through the roof, your ammonia has skyrocketed and you can't figure out why. And it's usually because your starfish is now decaying in the sand bed and you can't find it. They are also very, very sensitive to water parameter changes, especially salinity and pH. A lot of them don't do well with the transfer from the fish door to your home. The other problem with them during acclimation is exposing starfish or sea stars to air can also kill them over time. So let your aquarium mature, give it a year or two at least before you want to add a starfish and then just be careful because some of them can grow really large. Uh, the blue linkias, they can grow up to eight inches across without any trouble at all. And if you've got a small nano aquarium, there's just not gonna be enough food to support that kind of uh, animal. So yeah, just leave the starfish alone for a good year or two and then come and revisit do some more research, see if your aquarium is ready to have them. Number two on the list is the flame scallops. I fell victim to these guys. It was almost one of my first invertebrates that I ever bought way, way, way back when in my first solid aquarium. And yeah, it lasted about a month and then just shriveled up and decayed and rotted and sent my nitrates through the roof. They're really, really beautiful and it makes them really tempting when you want to go and buy one but they're really tough to feed they're filter feeders that require individual feedings of microscopic foods like phytoplankton again for the beginner you want to try and have your aquarium be as easy as possible and flame scallops are just going to add a level of complexity that you don't need they're really intolerant to nitrates and if you have any illness in your aquarium and you want to treat it most medications are based on copper and copper will kill flame scallops and many other invertebrates in an instant. Because they also have a shell, they are probably going to require constant dosing of calcium and alkalinity as they grow. Their shell is going to suck up those elements and you're going to need to replace them. And if you've not got to dosing yet, it's just another thing that you're going to have to figure it out and research and add another complexity to your aquarium. The flame scallops do have a high mortality rate, but they do have a fairly short life in the wild. So 
again just not something you want to put in your tank leave them for a larger mature aquarium just not a good invertebrate to spend your money on number three on the list are sea slugs or nudibranchs or nudies as they're shortened to uh, these can be really beautiful colorations especially the uh, the blue velvet nudibranchs they're like a black with some electric blue stripes on them they look beautiful but another invert just stay away from they have a really short life in the wild anyway and even shorter in your aquarium uh, they have very specific diets which could be hard to provide in your aquarium in a large enough quantity they're going to eat tube worms sponges tunicates etc the main problem with a lot of nudies or sea slugs is that when they die they can release a really powerful toxin that can kill your fish and they generally die <laughs> there's no doubt about it they die really quick in your aquarium and if they release that toxin then it's going to wipe out your entire tank and it's just not worth it the other problem with these guys is that they they're like the snails they get everywhere they can go get stuck in your overflows get go down your drain pipe and cause your aquarium to overflow if they get sucked into an impeller and the impeller just mashes them up they're going to release that toxin and possibly cause your tank crash they're not a good fit for a beginner so leave them alone that's the sea slugs or the breaks. number four on my list are the blue leg or blue knee hermit crabs hermit crabs are cool i've got hermit crabs in my aquarium and i've had all the different types of hermit crabs you can imagine over the years but the blue knee and the blue legged hermit crabs are a pain in the ass they are just aggressive towards your snails if you've got a snail population in there these guys are just going to go and decimate that population they are going to hunt down those snails turn them on their back and just basically eat them to steal their shells they can be really aggressive to their own so if you've got other smaller ones in there they can just attack those so they're just a real pain the best hermit crabs to get are the scarlet hermits they're much less aggressive and they will just leave your snails alone if you do have hermit crabs in there one of the cool little tricks that i've uh, learned over the years is each time you go to the fish store just pick up a couple of empty shells that are bigger than your snails that you currently have and then just throw them in at the back of the aquarium and then over time the hermit crabs will wander around find the bigger shell and swap homes and hopefully leave your snail population alone but go with the scarlet hermit crabs rather than the blue legged or the blue knee crabs and your snails will have a lot better of a life number five on the list is a mantis shrimp these are one of the coolest invertebrates you could ever have in an aquarium but the problem is they're an apex predator and if you get one of these in your aquarium it's going to be the only thing left in your aquarium they require a species only tank where that is the only guy in there or at least a large fish only aquarium with large fish that it cannot grab and kill mantis shrimp you put a mantis shrimp into your tank it's going to decimate your snail population your crab population and you've probably got mostly small fish in your aquarium they're going to disappear too they are one of the best predators in the saltwater aquarium world and they are world record holder having the fastest moving body part known to that they have a club underneath them that they can smash shells with and it moves at over 23 meters per second and it has the force of a 22 caliber bullet hitting that shell so that crab and that snail is going to have no chance yeah just leave the mantis shrimp in the store it's not for a beginner if you purchase one of those it's going to be the only thing in your tank within weeks so just leave them alone it's the mantis shrimp number six on the list is sea apples and sea cucumbers these can be really really pretty and really tempting to buy and to be honest i wish a lot of the fish stores wouldn't sell these they're really difficult to keep and feed well fish can pick at their tentacles on the sea apples and stress them and just like the nudibrex they can release a poison into the water which you buy one of these and it's going to get stressed no matter what as a beginner we're all guilty of not keeping our tank parameters exactly as they should be when we're new to this hobby and they're going to get stressed so don't buy the sea cucumbers or the sea apples uh, the sea cucumbers they can get large they need a large aquarium they're going to be moving around all over the place and they need to have a big food source just like starfish large mature aquarium 
is what is required for the sea cucumbers. As a beginner with a possibly a small aquarium, don't buy them because they're gonna to starve to death. And just like the starfish, they're gonna find somewhere to die that you can't access and they're gonna rot and cause your nitrates to spike and possibly poison your aquarium. Just like most inverts, they're really sensitive to nitrates and copper-based meds. Yeah, just stay away from the sea apples and the sea cucumbers. Number seven on the list, uh, another one that I've succumbed to and learned the hard way is the horseshoe crabs. These are a really, really interesting addition to an aquarium, but it's a poor addition to an aquarium. I see them in stores all the time and my aquarium was about two years old and I was like, this is awesome, I've got to have one of these. And yeah, it was cool. It swam around for a while and then it went into the sand bed and I never saw it again. They do have really high mortality rates in aquarium. Again, another invertebrate that starves to death because you don't have enough food in there. Just stay away from the horseshoe crabs. They're cool to see in public aquariums and on the beaches, but just not something for a beginner. Uh, that's the horseshoe crab. And number eight on the list are cephalopods or octopus. These are awesome. I would love to have an octopus in an aquarium, but just like the mantis shrimp, it needs its own aquarium. They are very specialist invertebrates. They can start really small. You can see them in the fish store and they're tiny, but they can grow real big, real quick. And they are escape artists. You need to have an aquarium with a tight fitting lid because this thing will go through the tiniest hole. If it can fit its beak through it, it's coming out. So just stay away from them. They're just not good for a beginner mixed reef aquarium. They're going to destroy your crabs, your snails, your fish. They're a predator. The other problem I find with the octopus, and I wish the stores wouldn't sell them, are the blue ringed octopus. You may have heard of these already, but they are one of the most venomous octopus in the world. They have enough toxin in their bite to kill 26 adults. That's insane. The other biggest problem is there's no known antidote for its bite. So if you have a blue ringed octopus and you get bit by one, your toast. That's just the way it's going to be. I've seen them in stores for as little as one inches and they can grow to about the size of your hand which can make them really tempting for most aquarists but it's going to clean your tank out of all your other livestock and if it bites you, you're doomed. It's just not worth the risk. So that wraps up the list of some of the most popular inverts that I really recommend you avoid as a beginner. Some of them are just not going to do well in your aquarium. They either require species only aquariums or your aquarium just isn't mature enough to, for them to be able to maintain enough food source to keep them alive. So just stay away from them for now until you've got more experience. Um, there's plenty of other awesome inverts that you can get. Um, just check out the video at the end and you'll, uh, you'll see the link to inverts that I recommend for beginners. And this week's beginner tip, if you're sitting around one evening and all of a sudden you hear a clicking coming from your tank, chances are you've either had a hitchhiker in the form of either a pistol shrimp or even worse, a mantis shrimp. Uh, the clicking noise is either the pistol shrimp closing its claw really quickly or it's a mantis shrimp knocking on rock trying to make its cave. If you have, you may start to see shells start to appear around the cave it's a mantis shrimp, be careful, do not handle them with your bare hands because they're called knuckle breakers for a reason. If you do find one, try and trap it. There's lots of ways on the internet of how people have trapped mantis shrimps or unwanted pistol shrimps. Some really ingenious ways, so I suggest you go search the forums and have a look to try and find a way that might suit you and your aquarium to catch that hitchhiker before they just destroy your snail and crab population. If you found the information in this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe button and go and have a look at some of our other videos. We've got lots of cool stuff and new videos coming out every single week, all to help you in your saltwater aquarium journey. See you next time.